that way, romance novel, Save the Galaxy, by Ariana Derelte, Chapter 20, Femur 3. Femur really, really didn't want to make this report. The moment the Lalini learned of his need, they had led him to a large room with hollow protectors all along the walls and floor. He was told it was usually used for some sort of gaming involving holograms. Then they had handed him a cup of his favorite tea, made just the way he liked it. So here he was, having to face the entirety of the council, virtually, rather than one-on-one. -on -one. He released his annoyance at how helpful the Lalini were into the force. The Padawan in charge of the council chambers had him on hold for quite a while. It was almost a shock when the hollow projectors around the room sprung to life. The full force of their regard was a bit muted by the blue tinge to the holograms, but it was otherwise very reminiscent of a full council meeting. He bowed. Watchman Femal, you have an urgent report regarding the Mandalorians, asked Master Windu. Yes, Masters. I was contacted by a young Mandalorian named Benin Chris. He handed me a book and asked me to read it and evaluate its accuracy regarding the Jedi. Mandalorians to be bought this was? asked Yoda. Fimor nodded. It was, Master Yoda. On one hand, Fimor wouldn't have to explain the book to them. On the other, he was now a bit worried that the Council also knew the book by name. The Council is in the process of reading this book, Knight Fimor, explained Master Tivoka. There have been too many incidents with the Mandalorians recently. Are she? said Fimor. Well, Benin Chris made it clear to me why such incidents are happening. While we have not all finished reading the book, there is nothing in it which is all that remarkable, excepting the surprisingly accurate description of Jedi, said Ki Adimundi. Madame Nu claims the Mandalorian sections are accurate as well, but in my opinion it is not much different from all the other romance novels starring Jedi out there in the galaxy. Fumor kept his face carefully blank. Just how many romance novels have Master Mundi read to draw the conclusion? We are also aware of how popular it is in Mandalorian space, contributed Even Peel. I understand, Masters, said Fumor with a bow, but I need to share the cultural revolution this novel is causing. I don't think the Mandalorians ever had a clue about what Jedi are actually like compared to millennia held grudges and hearsay. Judging by what I read in the book, it's the same for us regarding them. This book has opened more eyes to a salient fact. Which is, as the window, who was always good for providing a dramatic cue, that our cultures are very similar. We both have codes we live by. We take in families, regardless of their origin. We have sacred weapons, or armor, in their case. And we value warriors. Ivan Piel had a look of disgust on his face. We are nothing like them. They've slaughtered entire peoples. So have the Jedi who have fallen, who became Sith said Kiadi Mundi in a carefully neutral tone, which just so happened to always go Master Piel onward. Your point, Dennis, interjected Yaddle. Fimor was grateful she saved him from being caught in an hour-long argument between Piel and Mundi like he had last time he was before the council. He pretended he didn't see her wink at him. My point is that now that the Mandalorians have realized our cultural similarities, Many of them have collectively decided to strengthen our ties. Chris mentioned romantically, but I suspect they will also try to adopt. One part of one, one nation, adopted they have, admitted Yoda. Few more suspected that member would be climbing. Romantically? Asked Master Ten. Few more fought out a blush. Yes, Master, romantically. I'm assured there is even historical precedent that predates the Mandalorian's dilemma. Master Wendy looked ready to bang his head on the side of his chair. Though you mean to tell us the Mandalorians, the Galaxy over, have collectively decided that rather than hating us, they want to woo us. Yes, Master. Master Wendy grunted in what was probably pain. Fumor didn't know much about shatter points, but he had heard they were painful, though the card on Master. There is another issue of some urgency I must bring up, Masters, said Fumor. Benny and Chris informed me that the Mandalorians and Death Watch are all hunting for the author of this book. They may need protection if they're found. There was a long moment of silence while the council conferred through the force. Talk down the author, you're right, said Yoda finally. More answers we will seek. It was unusual to reassign a watchman like Fimor so quickly, but the Standal sector really was quiet at the moment. Chris had some particular questions about the Jedi in the book said Fumor delicately. He liked Benin, but he didn't want to be subject to hours of specific questions about every detail of the book. I did contact Madame Nu, 
said Master Windu. He clearly wanted the meeting to be over. Thank you for your report, Knight Fimor, said Master Tivoka. Fimor bowed and held it until all the hollow projectors had blinked off. He was a bit sad that his stint as a watchman was coming to a close, but also excited for the mission, especially since he'd managed to find Benin a better person to talk to than Fimor. A few seconds later, a Lalini came in, took his teacup, and handed him his favorite drink, this time liberally laced with alcohol. Their need to satisfy their guests came in handy sometimes. He drained the entire thing. Noren didn't recognize the clan insignias of the Mandalorians attacking them, and that worried him. He had no idea what a black or white star on a pauldron might signify. Hiam had sensed their approach and hidden Kiri in a nearby rock formation before he and Nored went out into the open to face the ten who tried to surround them. Nored guarded Hiam's back and shot his rifle at the two in the air with their jetpacks while Hiam expertly wielded his turquoise lightsaber to slice through the unprotected joints of the armor of any Mandalorian who got too close. Slugs were dodged as if they were bothersome flies and not deadly weapons. Only once did Hyam need some help when his saber shorted on what looked like a woven shield one of the warriors in red armor was carrying. It must have been woven with cortosis. Hyam ducked as if he knew Nared's shot was coming, narrowly also avoiding a blow from the Beskad in the Mandalorian's other hand. Nared's blaster bolt knocked the Mandalorian back for a second, which was long enough for Hyam's lightsaber to reignite and be swiped through the unprotected spots below the warrior's knee guards, crippling them. Nared kicked the Beskat and shield far away, but did it deliver the killing blow? He wanted to know what the clan was first. He scanned the area. Most of the warriors who attacked them were down. The others had disappeared. Hyam was panting lightly, eyes slit as he scanned the area with what was probably the force to check their enemies were gone. Suddenly, all color drained from Hyam's face. He ran from the rocks where they had left Kiri. Nared was on his heels. There was nothing where they left her but a torn piece of cloak and her water bottle.